Welcome to It's Your Date with Destiny with Apostle Vivian and Pastor Gemma Duncan of Divine Destiny Worship Center in Diego Martin. For the next 30 minutes, join us as we take you on a journey of maximizing your potential and realizing your goals through Jesus Christ. Whether it's on a Sunday, Tuesday, or Friday, or any other day of the week, a warm welcome awaits you at Divine Destiny Worship Center, a place where your full potential is discovered. Here's a special invitation to join us at our sanctuary for... We give God praise today. Now, when I say we, I want to include you. Even in your circumstance, that does not seem to say, let's praise Him. We say at Divine Destiny Worship Center, there are only two times you should worship, two times you should be praising. When you feel like, and when you don't feel like. When you feel like, you go faster into the throne room. When you don't feel like, but you still worship, God says, it's a sacrifice of praise. Either way, He receives you, coming boldly into the throne of grace to obtain mercy and grace in your time of need. And maybe right now, you are in a time when you need the grace of God. You need the favor of God. We say to you, a worshiper is a worshiper is a worshiper. Get into the series. Get into the rhythm of what we are doing. We are pursuing this line of teaching because we want you to be a spontaneous, prompt to do it worshiper. You don't wait until you meet other people, you don't wait until you get to church, you don't wait until times are good, you just worship. Like David, you want to make that declaration, yea, though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. How does God uh, come to be with us? When we give him the praise in the midst of our, of our circumstance. Amen. Okay, good morning. I'm Apostle Vivian Duncan on behalf of my wife, Apostle Gemma. And all the covenanters of Divine Destiny Worship Center, the House of Champions, welcoming you one more time to It's Your Date with Destiny, the television arm of our media ministry. And today, again, we continue the series. A worshiper is a worshiper is a worshiper coming out of the revelation that God just keeps unfolding for us from Psalm 63. By now, you should have sent for your CDs and DVDs and so on. And by now, as of course, you should have been on your way to Divine Destiny Worship Center to enjoy a worship session with us, which includes the music and the spoken word. We give God the praise that he has so blessed us. So just relax, take a view of our next installment of a worshiper is a worshiper, is a worshiper. It's your passion for God that will give you the jump over other people in similar situations. It's your passion for God that will make you not turn back when you come up to a mountain because you'll find a way around You'll find a way through, you'll climb over, but you're not going back. Yes. It's your passion for God that will take you through the dark valley, shouting and praising Him. Yes. Huh? Yes. But we're going to talk about that just now. He says, so make a decisive decision of your bodies. And look at what he, he regards as bodies. Let's read. Presenting all your members. All your what? And you're not talking about divine destiny with members. You're talking about your fingers. I command my hands to praise the Lord. I command my feet to praise the Lord. I command my lips. All, that, all the components that make up your visible being, you can label them as your members. Amen? Amen. Amen. And Paul talks about that in other, other um, epistles where he talks about all of us are members of the body of Christ. Just like the body 
in the flesh has many members, so does the body of Christ have many members, and every member has a specific function. Huh? It's a give God all of that. Plus what? Members and what? Faculties. No, members are visible. Faculties are not visible. They are on the inside. But members can't work without faculties. So faculties have to uh, be spread over a wider spectrum than just what we see here. It, so it has to be your mind. Your what? Your mind. Has to be your thinking. Has to be your, the way you reckon things. Has to be the way that you understand. Your understanding. Eh? Eh? Your, your might. What, what makes you strong on the inside. Your ability to, 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 to resist things that are coming to take you out. All those things are your faculties, your thinking, your, your visioning, your, your ability to decipher matters, to, to look at things and come up with a, a, a plan of dealing with it. He said, give God all of that. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. In other words, Lord, I'll come to church, but you see me? I ain't helping in nothing in the church. Then something wrong with you. Especially if you are qualified out there. You, you, you work in the Ministry of Youth Affairs. And you are one of those counselors that go out to uh, Laventille and all those places to counsel people. Eh? Or you're an accountant. And what, but if, when church has a demand for Mentoring. Hmm? I demand ample, ample de de dealing with, 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 with correct guidance and whatever. And you are in that out there. You have degree and thing in that. But when you come to church, you want to use your faculties to help advance that. Then you're wrong like a ball going on a hill. You're wrong. Because may I tell you, hey, hey, there are people brighter than you. But right now, they're non-functional. They're in a hospital, so. They're in a nursing home, so. Oh, yeah, all the faculties they have can use it. And you have it. You know it was given by God because you and bright, so. Has to be God's mercies that got you through that exam. Well, then God said, I pulled you through that. In view of all the mercies I showed you, you should now be actively pursuing the vision of the house. Because in pursuing the vision of the house, you are actually pursuing me, God is saying. See me? I, when you say I leave work, I leave all that kind of thinking and thing behind. So when I come to church, I come to praise God. May I tell you, there is more value in praising God by serving than just by singing. Because after the song service is over, we're still supposed to be, and I'm I using song service because the singing part, we're still supposed to be serving God. After the service is over tonight and, and, and Sunday and whenever we have official service, do you know you're still supposed to be serving God? And one of the good things about, about the, the vision God has given us in this house is that everybody has ample opportunity. And I, I, I'm, I'm doing a pun on ample. Ample opportunity to serve. You cannot tell me there's no place in this church for you to present your faculties. We have about 38 ministries. I don't know another church that have so many for the size that we are in. I, I, first, I can't find any, any area to minister. Well then, what do you want to do? All right. Ah, come, by, come down to the office. I have a little square bottle of oil. No, not this one. This is the castle of devils. I want your downstairs there. And I slap it on you. I say, no, you go and organize it. Because the, the fact that you can't find a space but you want to do something, it means it's inside of you. 
So I could, I could actually declare, come out. But it's not a devil, it's not a devil. <laughs> I'm talking about your faculties. And, and, and the people in Antigua who are watching right now, when we come on the next trip, that's what we're coming to do. Put each person in a ministry. Oh, I was frightened. Very good. Come out, you spirit of fear. God has not given you a spirit of fear. He has given you a spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. Come on, let's go. Tell your neighbor, in this house you have no excuse. In fact, put it in a very diplomatic way, but biting. There is no excuse for laziness. Mm -hmm. Right, good, lovely. Good. So he says, to make a decisive dedication of your bodies, presenting all, presenting all your members. If you can't make soup, then sell it. Oh yeah, they, somebody can make the soup. You could share it out and another person could collect the money. Do you know you're serving? You come to church? I see paper on the ground. You don't care. Who does clean here? They, they can't see the paper on the ground. You listen, the moment you dip to pick it up, you're presenting your faculties. Amen. Presenting all your members and faculties as a what? As a what? Oh Lord, oh, that's the problem. You see, all other sacrifices in times of the Bible were dead. So they, they couldn't quarrel when the fire started. Because one of the things I could tell you about serving in church, not everybody appreciates you. In fact, some people wish, some people wish that you will not serve in that area. Some people want to know how you get in there. Now, they don't want to do that. But they find you so shouldn't do that. But tell the neighbor, say, neighbor, if you know where I came from and what God had to do to make me looking so good, then you will leave me, let me serve. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, serious. Because that, that's what has happened to a lot of people. A lot of people who come into churches like this that is so active and have so many different areas of expression, a lot of people sit like bumps on the log doing nothing but will prevent everybody else from doing something. But God will catch up with you. Tell your neighbor, behold, God is doing a new thing. <laughs> and in spite of you, he will get people to serve. So you better get on board. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. And I'm telling you, God is bringing in, in every batch that's coming in, my God, he's bringing in some talented, educated, dedicated, uh, 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 what else? Money-cated, they have money too. Uh, people, yes. And soon we're going to have one of those receptions of all those who came in over the last year or two. And we're going to explain to you exactly where your areas of service are. So that as we hit 2016, you'll be part of the new thing that God is doing. Nobody must sit down in this church doing nothing. But I can't sing, well, don't join Judah. There are other places you could join. And if you do join Judah, then we're going to put you in the back. <laughs> and kind of twist the mic so. <laughs> but, <laughs> but at least you're doing something. No, but, but eventually you will learn. Uh, he, he, if Apostle Richard was here, Gonzalez was here, he will tell you straight, the first time he joined our choir, he was on tuning the keyboard. You, you hear him sing now? You, you ever hear him sing now? So you know what we did? The big concert we were having in Hilton, big Hilton, you know? Nobody 
could ever tell him he was not part of a group that did a concert in Hilton. Oh, well, he picked up tickets, but he was part of the group. <laughs> but now the man sings. He sings a deep voice, a high voice. So, so tell the neighbor there's hope for you. <laughs> there's hope for you. So, so <laughs> in other words, you cannot be in the kingdom and not serving under the king. Are you me? It's a whole new mentality God wants for us. Because if, if, if you look what David said, I'm following God with my whole being. If you go up to verse 6, he said, on my bed, when I lie down on my bed, my mind is about God. How do I bless him? How do I show God uh, gratitude for his mercies being shown to me? Other people died in the wilderness. Uh, wolves and lions ate them up. But my God kept me. Some died from sunstroke, but I am here, alive and well, in view of all the mercies of God. And then he continues, he said, as a living sacrifice, you're going to be alive, but you have to play dead. Because once it's a sacrifice, he's talking about committing something that is out of your control. Once you're committed, it's dead to you. Are you hearing me? I say, once you commit it, it's dead to you. That's why you don't stress yourself if you give somebody a gift and they throw it down the hill. Hello, it's dead to me. What you know is not to give them a next one. But if they throw it down the hill, what are you stressing for? Oh, good. Look at it. It's not yours anymore. You gave it. Eh? And what Paul was really saying about mortifying the flesh, he was saying the way the world operates is that whenever you step out to do something of value, somebody's going to try to ambush you. He said, but play dead. Dead men can't feel. Dead people can't quarrel. No, in fact, I should say, dead people don't quarrel. Because he says, I want you to be alive, yet dead. Because anywhere you are where you have other people besides you, you're going to have conflicts. No, you're not the problem, you know, it's them. Right? 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 Right. And you're not the problem, it's them. Because you, you don't ever worry nobody. You don't ever get under nobody's skin. You're so good, Right? It's built into the human being, even though you are 50 years saved. Unless you are surrendered to God as a living sacrifice, it's built into the human being to feel a bit peeved if somebody comes up doing something better than you. Or seem to be more preferred than you by those whom you think should appreciate you. It's a natural part of human living. Don't stress over it. Don't get vexed with God and rob God of his worship that comes from you. The only, only type of worship that's like that in the earth, the one that you give. Don't rob God of that because somebody got under your skin. And when they thought you were dead to that, you suddenly spring alive. And when you reach in the car park, you, you use Christian curse. You didn't say a word with your mouth, but when they was coming near your car, watch you. Good day. Service was good. So, service was good, eh, boy? That is Christian curse. Hey, hey. And as the ministry grows, by the time we get our building and you have a thousand and something people, 1,800 we're looking to, to, to seat. And you could always squeeze in two more chairs over so, over so. So we might make a 2,000. There'll be two. No, 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 no. No. No, there'll be 2,000 problems. But 1,999 
will stress you out. Because you, you wouldn't have a problem. Or you would never be the problem. Is the other 1999 people. Of course, they'll be saying the same thing. <laughs> but, but I'm saying to us, I'm saying to us that if we intend to be the worshiper who will be a worshiper, who will be a worshiper in any situation, you have to play dead. I want to thank God tonight for honesty. Yes, my mother has brought me up well. Um, a couple of weeks back, um, usually when I come home from work, I take up a little trip to St. James. So I happened to take up a guy and three ladies. So the guy dropped off first, then after I dropped off the ladies. So when I watched back, I saw a, a fat wallet. I say, my God. So I say, all right. Um, it makes no sense. Can't, I can't get rich if I take anything from this. It's, it's, it's a, a lot of Visa card and all the documents in it. Money, everything. U.S., everything. So I say, all right. I have to find back this person. I went, the last person I dropped off a lady in Diamond Vale. She says, no, it's not her. So when I check, I was searching through the wallet for a number to call. It, it burdened on me. A number, call, get somebody, get, call this person. When, well, I see no contact, so I decided to um, Facebook. So I went on Facebook, I saw the guy's name, everything. Leave a message on Facebook, my phone number, everything. Two days pass, nothing. So I, I in the work, I, told, I tell any guys, I say, I find a wallet, you know. And father say, hey, time money? I say, yeah. I say, but I's a man of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Proud to say. <laughs> Proud to say. So I'm, I'm an honest man. My, my parents grew me up honestly. So I say, I have to return that. It's a burden on me. I have to return the money. Then for the say, if it was me, I'd take that, yes? What? i take that. I say, nah, I can't get rich of that, from that. My God will bless me. So... My manager ended up overheard and he said, yeah, you're a good worker. So I said, yeah, man. So um, the following day, the phone rang. I said, well, this is an opportunity to minister to this guy. Right? Because I decided to say, well, the world economy went down because of dishonest people, greedy people. Hmm. So I said, I'll use that. I'll use that. <laughs> right? To minister to this guy. Yes. I see, yes. Next thing you know, the, um, a few hours after, I, I get a phone call from him. So I tell him, I say, don't worry, yourself, I have it. Tell me where to meet you. <coughs> he said, all right, you'll meet me in Independence Square and everything. He said, man, I, so, I was so worried. I make, a, I, I make a report to the police station. I say, don't worry, yourself, I'm a man of God. That's I good. Say, Absolutely. I, good. It's safe with me, everything intact. Not a send missing. So you meet me, I minister to him, I say, the world looking for honest men. I want you to be honest. I want you to know God, that God still is alive today. And he raising up people who is honest and truth. So, you know, make, have that as a, 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 a lesson then. And I want to search for God because he is truth. He say, yes, man. All right, cool. He take out a little change, he hand me it. I say, all right, I'll go take it. I say, God bless. I say, God bless. He say, I have your number, I will call you. He say, I say, all right, no problem. So, you know, so I want to thank God tonight. I feel so good that, you know, I did something good and worthwhile. Destiny anointing oil. I'm going to anoint my hands. And today the Lord is saying, somebody's in the wilderness of lack. You are in the wilderness of lack. What do you do when that which you thought you had, you thought you had enough to purchase what you want to have, and you realize the price has gone up, you realize you don't have what it takes. I'm here to decree to you 
lack, fall back. Amen. Yes, we say a divine destiny. Lack, fall back. Lack, fall back. Come now, prosperity. And that's not any hocus pocus. That's what the Bible says. Right there in Psalm 118, verse 24, verse 25. You, you will see it. It says, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now, O Lord. Send now prosperity. And, and I always say that uh, like, like, like David had a computer in his brain. Because before you could send anything on a computer, you have to first save it. Hey, so God has actually saved your blessing, saved your prosperity. And now you need to tell the Lord, press send. Somebody shout, Lord, press send. And I prophesy that luck is going to fall back. Amen. But you have to be the type of person who when God blesses you, you operate on the principle, if God could get it through you, he will get the money to you. Are you a giver? Are you the kind of person that will uh, follow the principle when God blesses you, you give your tithes, you give offerings, you bless other people? If you are like that, I prophesy that God will press the send button. Send now your prosperity. So it's time to worship. He heard your cry. Amen. We give God the praise for all of that. Yes, so this is weekend. We are into uh, the weekend of the middle of November, we are saying to you, this Sunday there's a powerful word waiting for you. This Sunday there's a grace in the house. Amen. Come, bring your friend, bring your, 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 your tante from England, bring your sister from uh, North Carolina who come down, bring your cousin from Canada, bring all your friends from New York who come down to some party somewhere, bring them to church first. I dare say to you, they will tell you, uh-uh, we're not going to the party again. Because they would have had a Holy Ghost party at Divine Destiny Worship Center. Amen. Good. And during the week, we have Tuesday service at 5.30, deliverance service, live streamed. We have Wednesday service at 11 a.m. It's a midday service. And Friday at 7, live stream as well, deliverance. That's, that, that's what we do at Divine Destiny. As we worship, the anointing comes down. And anything that's not of God has to be removed in the name of Jesus. Amen. And of course, our radio programs on a Monday at 9 p.m., 98.1. It's your date with destiny. On uh, Tuesday on 107.1, we have Living the More Abundant Life at 9.30 p.m. And then 3 p.m. on a Friday on 98.1, Ask Pastor Gemma. You need to be listening to all of them and getting more people joining you to listen. The book of the month is... I am woman. The first book Apostle Gemma wrote, you need to get a copy of that book called 6957892 or just drop in at Divine Destiny Worship Center and you will get those books. And do you know, for the folks in Tobago, Tobago, we, ha we do have books at uh, Restoration, which is affiliated with us, but now CLC, CLC, the, the, the Christian Literature Crusade, is now open downstairs of Hepzibah Ministries. Downstairs of Hepzibah Ministries on Bacolet Street. And you know what? CLC Tobago now carries all our books. So you want to know where you can get books that we have written and you are in Tobago? First, you can check Restoration. And Restoration, every Sunday, they have a book table there. But now, every day, during the week, until Saturday, at CLC, new um, headquarters in Tobago, downstairs of Hepzibah Ministries, you can get a copy of any of our books. And when we come over to Tobago, yeah, what do you do? Bring them, and we're going to autograph them for you. Amen? That's a deal. So, until we meet again, I'm Apostle Vivian Duncan. We have my wife, Apostle Gemma. And all the covenanters at Divine Destiny Worship Center, the House of Champions, I declare to you, you began life as a winner. Don't live it as a victim or die as a loser. You're a God idea. Because when God made you, he had destiny on his mind. God bless you. Until we meet.
again. As you continue to reach your goals through Jesus Christ, this has been It's Your Date with Destiny, a production of Divine Destiny Media Ministry. Until next time, you began life as a winner. Don't live life as a victim or die as a loser. For when God made you, he had destiny on his mind.